Now today, we put the final touches on our custom wheel projects for the GS. This was the culmination of about 125 hours of restoration on the wheels, custom painting, brand new tires, total cleanup, every possible little detail, polishing the bolts, the parts, all the little things, a brand new sprocket, among other things. And this project went over 29 videos Usually I work about four hours of footage goes into a video. So I'm just guessing it's 120, 125 hours. But the result, now you can figure it out yourself if you think this is worth it. I wanted this custom touch and I wanted it badly. And I started this project months ago and today we got to put the final touch on. And actually I got to take a little test ride so I could shoot some pictures with some nicer backgrounds, some of the lakes that we drive by and some of the little backgrounds that we use for photoing. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, today's one of the days we've been waiting for basically for uh, quite a long time. We have the final piece of this puzzle. We have the sprocket from Vlad. It came late last night from Amazon, from uh, the post office. I'm so used to getting Amazon packages. But, and the last time I got a post, <laughs> Something from the post office. It took 30 days to get here when that, off, that muffler came from Chris. But anyway, we have reliable delivery. We're going to try to get this buttoned up today. This Now, just think of it. 29 videos ago, we started this project. And, and I average four hours a day in the shop. So you can figure that's about 125 hours to do this custom set of wheels. Is it worth it? You decide. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue. And about that and other things but anyway it will be really nice to get this project finished today and even get it out it looks like it's going to be a sunny afternoon if we get done get a little photo shoot going with the pictures with the new wheels I'm sure some of the people like Dallas will be looking forward to seeing that and then of course getting a wheel the gold wheel back on this I don't know if I'm gonna to have to change the sprocket because this this bike still has the 630 chain <clears throat> that may get involved. I don't know about it. Now, that's not important. What I really would like to concentrate on is getting the GS done, get it all put together, get it outside, and get some pictures of it to share. It starts the same here. I have to check in with Karen, see what errands she has to do. And she's working on her farm today in her garden. I'm going to show a little preview of how that's going. We've been spending a lot of time on that. Something we both enjoy and something we like to share. So here on the farm, all the barnyard animals are fed. Okay, guys, come on. We got birds to feed. We got fish to feed. We got crops to plow to all 40 acres. Okay, there you go. There you go. Now, this used to be my area for painting, but for sure, it's not going to be painting now. Well, we're going to be planting, and I'll show you what our little greenhouse is coming. It's coming together little by little. Everything's starting to turn green out here. We got alliums coming up and and thank you again, Joe Thank you for the help with the stones 6,000 pounds of stones there Now we're only a few days away from having purple wisteria. I can see all the blooms are getting ready to come out It is a spectacular time This part of the country everything's turning green And Karen's flowering tree is already blooming and she is she is turning into a real farm girl, that's for sure. <laughs> now we got a nice cardinal visiting us this morning too as we're doing our chores. You see the birds are as hungry as I am this morning. Yes, yeah, they're always hungry. So this is the beginning of the back of our house. It's a little hot house and it's actually attached to the house. And th this is 100 seedlings that are going in here. We planted seeds. We actually still have some more seeds to plant. but. <laughs> That's what 100 seeds looks like. And we're getting 100 more. And the fun is, pretty soon every one of these seeds, or a lot of them, are gonna turn into little plants and flowers, vegetables. We'll be eating from this garden all summer. So before I can start anything today, I gotta do what I do best. I gotta be a parking lot attendant and move some motorcycles around here. And get the GS out, and get the back end up off the ground so I can replace the wheel.
Uh, next time we see the bike, it'll have a max set of wheels. I am really looking forward to that. And there's a lot of times I feel like the biggest job on the farm here is being parking lot attendant with all these motorcycles. Okay, all the bikes are moved around and we are ready to start. But we need one thing first, a nice cup of coffee and we'll be ready to go. And I do like staying busy between the farm and the motorcycles. I'm a busy guy. Oh, after a nice cup of coffee, it's good coming down into the shop. And there's our victim of the day. Oh boy, we have waited patiently for this day. And now it's paying big dividends. In a couple hours, we'll have that on a bike and get a nice photo shoot. And I think I'm going to have to put, because this is a 630 sprocket, put this back on the old carrier. I think I'm going to have to play a lot of musical chairs here. And then we have the final thing. That after today's project, we want to swap out the muffler for testing. And I don't know if we got the right head pipe. But one thing we are missing is the springs. I need to get a couple of the springs that hold that. Don't have those stuck. And I need to find out today if these nuts are going to be exactly what I want. Or I'm going to have to use the old ones. But I've got them all polished up and cleaned up and ready to go. I have to thank Vlad at Motor World Incorporated, and you can check out his website. He has really, really been a good friend over the years, gotten me many parts, hard to get parts, and he really knows his stuff, and he's been a good friend, that's the main thing. So let's see what we got here. He sourced this out, and this is a 40 tooth. Now this is not the stock, is I think 41 or 42, it doesn't matter smaller sprocket just to reduce some of the RPM on this engine. Remember this engine has 72,000 miles and still it's in perfect condition. doesn't burn any oil. Wow. So this is just great. JT, whatever that means. Okay. Oh, and I get a free decal. In and mad, the orange matches in case I scratch the paint. I always keep these when you scratch the paint. Oh, it's got a nice polish to it, too. Wow, that's pretty nice. Very, very nice. Vlad, thank you very much. So the first little decision I have to make here, since these parts have all been cleaned, I need to see if, and this will be, this will be an interesting test, I know. Let's see if that is going to be the right now I don't know see these nuts have to go down far enough that we're into the nylon locking part of them to be what I want them to be and to be effective so it looks like that's the case in fact it looks definitely the case but you know what I'm going to do just as a double precaution I'm going to put some blue Loctite on them anyway these are just a little bit wider than the other ones now what I'm doing I'm just socking one of these up I, I can see it would be a problem if you had the socket. It, boy, it just fits in there. Ooh, just tight. Anyway, the reason I went with these lock nuts, Luciano recommended this. It was actually, and he's used them for many years. But I, I think the, the blue Loctite is just cheap insurance. So that's perfect. The nylon part, the locking part has caught on the bolt. That is, I think, as good as it gets. I'll torque them down in a star pattern when I'm all done. But for right now, I want to get everything. I was hoping that would be exactly the right thing because the, the stock nuts are shorter and that it eliminates that unsightly little piece of tin that goes in between them. I think that's going to be a nice upgrade. Here in fast forward, you can see this one together pretty well. Everything as expected. And these are once these are all torqued down to factory spec, I'll be really, really happy. That's a nice unit. Now, of course, for the final torquing, I have to put this in a vise, that's for sure. All right, everything's torqued down. That's ready to install. And that is a nice unit, nicely polished. All we got to do is swap it out now. And this is when all the work we did during the winter it all starts to pay off. Oh, I hear the birds chirping, the church bells are ringing. What a great time to own a GS. Now, just a random thing that we're ready for a tire, for sure, this is ready for a tire. 
so we didn't even waste much of that rubber, that's for sure. And it's being replaced with the exact same Michelin tire. And taking the back wheel off, pretty straightforward. It's always a good thing. In fact, if you have a GS, you already know this. You pull this little bolt out, that tire comes right out the back. It's, it's there because if you didn't do that, you'd have to take one of the mufflers off to pull the axle. And I guess there's people that don't know that, just like I didn't know when I bought the counter shaft sprocket. This bike has a 16 tooth counter shaft sprocket. And I didn't know the same one fits a Hayabusa. So, pretty cool. I try to put some of this in fast forward because it's a pretty straightforward job. There's nothing really unique about taking the back wheel off or the front wheel for that matter. The next thing is going to be to get the caliper up out of the way so we can just pull the back wheel straight back. And once we have the caliper up out of the way, we're almost ready to pull the wheel here. Now with the caliper off, we can get this up out of the way. Maybe just get a zip tie on this. I gotta see if that's gonna pull. If not, I'll have to take that bolt out. Uh, I really don't want to take a chance on scratching a wheel, so what I'm gonna do is take that bolt out. There's a little cotter pin in the back, so I can get this totally out of the way. Otherwise, I got such a small amount of clearance. See, I was gonna zip tie this up here. Uh, not with these brand new wheels. I don't want to take any chance on scratching them, so I'll just take that and I'm done. So having the caliper totally out of the way and having this piece, now you can see I've got, I can put my finger in there where before I brought, it was very tight clearance there. So that will mean I will not, hopefully not scratch the rim. Now I can just, with everything loose here, I can push the axle adjusters down and hopefully uh, pull the, well, let's, we're going to find out right away. Pull that all out as a unit. Now before I can do anything else, I gotta back this bolt out so I can slide these down, move it forward, and pull the back wheel. And once that's apart, these slide right down, and these little pieces come out, and that'll slide right out the back. But it's gotta go forward so you can get the chain off first. The axle has to go forward, we've gotta get the chain off. Get this up out of the way, and they have to zip tie this. Sometimes you do. Is it going to stay there? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. Now it's catching on the chain. Put that chain up out of the way. That should make it a little bit easier. And just like that, it's off. And we're of course going to replace all these rusty parts with the polished parts, but that is now, that's the hard part of the job. Now clean up in there with some simple green before I go to the next step. So that's just because I have it apart, it's easy to do it now. Now because I don't do this every day, it's easier for me if I lay out all the parts just the way they came out, because some of the spacers a lot of times make you crazy where the spacers go and you've got to go back and forth, but I think just putting them out in that the order they came out, now I just will install everything onto the new wheel. Um, the new parts, and these will go back onto the parts bike. Now one of the parts we're going to use from the original, and then we're not going to, the other one is on the parts bike. So first thing I want to do is take this downstairs to the, the buffing wheel, clean this up. Anytime I have something apart, I want to clean it up. I have the hardware that's going back on here, I'll clean that all up before I start to assemble anything. And here's the reason I like polished parts. Cleaning that up in the future will be so much easier than cleaning that up with all those little little tangers and everything in there. And having one tooth less in the back, I'll have, in essence, overdrive. And you can see why I want to clean all that oxidation off, polish up the bolt heads. Every little step, every little step, and remember, the gods see everywhere. A couple of minutes on the polishing wheel, and all those parts and bolts and nuts, everything would be like brand new or better. Now, some people wouldn't care about this. This is one of the little details. I, it costs no money and almost no time. It makes a nice little addition to the motorcycle. Now, even just an example, just polishing this up a little bit. 40 40 some year old part and just restoring the bolts if nothing else it'll make such a big difference 
when I'm all done and this is all put together, it'll be a world of difference when the bolts are all polished. Now with all the hardware polished up, we'll definitely have a nice cup of coffee and get back out there and finish the job. A little comparison of the old wheel and how, how it looked after our restoration. While I got this apart, of course, the simple green is a great way to just get rid of some of this schmutz in here. Make it a little bit easier to put everything back. There's always some really good road grind back here, that's for sure. And that easy part, putting all the nice clean parts and polished parts all back together. I had all the cush drives are in. We can start assembling the back wheel. Now, as I'm putting this back together, I'm making sure everything has a little fresh coat of grease on it and that it's nice and clean. Now with the axle all the way forward, the next thing is to get the chain in position. Okay, and now we have to adjust, we put the two little blocks in here and adjust the chain. Let's just make sure we get these right. And then now what I'm going to have to do, because this is a different diameter sprocket, I'm going to back these bolts all the way out and get a whole new reading on the chain adjustment because this is a smaller diameter sprocket. And all that's left now, the calipers, adjust the chain, and pretty old stuff, pretty straightforward stuff. And get all the fingerprints off the bike, that's always important too. So at the end of every one of these projects, I try to look back and say, what would I have done different? In this case, not much. And this is another evil twin option I have for this bike, which is really an evil triplet now. We have body work, we have spare wheels we have a lot of a lot of choices whenever we get the feeling we want to just change it we have a lot of choices now there's things i do like the subtlety of that eighth inch stripe i like the fact now i've seen bikes i've seen this exact bike in fact with the wheels painted that color orange not in keeping with the bike this i think is subtle it floats my boat and, and there's nobody else it has to float either and i really think that really that is truly the end of a really, really nice project. Maybe 100 to 125 hours. And who knows, you can't count the money, of course. And because I've had the bike since it's new, and I have 72,000 on it, I think we're going to roll on to 100. And that engine is just a rock. And of course, you have to decide when you do a project like this, the time, the energy, the money you put into it, is it worth it? Well, some people it isn't. Some people it is. I'm one of the people that, because I've had the bike since new, and because I like having something just a little bit unique, and something that uh, I can put my seal of approval on, I guess is the right word, that, that project, these evil twin GS wheels, exceeded my wildest dream. And it's a perfect match in real life to the Suzuki lettering, which I thought was kind of a neat thing. And it's subtle, it doesn't jump out at you like a teenage kid did it, and I really think that's, that really is just something that makes me happy. Now, the final thing is Karen's going to come out here later and tell me how she likes it, and of course, she's a little prejudiced. So the first thing I wanted to do is, before I get ready to go out on the open road, I want to take a few pictures in the driveway from various angles just so I can review this on my own and next thing I want to do is get a short ride in and try to get some nice backdrops and get some pictures for my uh, well my own personal use and for future videos now that we have the black wheels on and the projects done we're ready to start riding the wheels off this bike and we've done that pretty well in the past I shot a few pictures and I checked in with Karen she has nothing really important to do and it looks like we've Got a little time left. I'm trying to get out on the open road a little bit. Get a couple of pictures with the bike with the new wheels. It'll be a short ride, but boy, I, I have never really been as happy with a project. And I'm so glad the way this worked out. That is, that is the subtle touch that that motorcycle needed all these years. I always say nothing changes a bike more 
then paint or a set of custom wheels. Now what's really nice, we got brand new tires. Oh boy, nothing makes a bike like this, any bike. Handle better than a brand new set of tires, I can't wait. I got time for a ride and I just, well, I just want to shoot some pictures today more than anything. And as I'm getting ready for going out, eh, the skies is blue. Still just a little bit chilly. It's supposed to get a little warmer later today. Give me your honest opinion. Do you like it? I love it. The wheels are great. You love me as much as those wheels? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I love those wheels. So it turned out to be a really nice day for a little test ride. And of course the GS, always very comfortable. pretty nimble for a relatively heavy bike. And no matter what the road conditions are, this bike handles them well. Even when the road gets a little twisty, it hangs in there. And with the new sprocket, the motor is hardly working. bike has amazing low-end torque and that sprocket takes full advantage of it. So we actually have like an overdrive gear now. actually made first gear more usable. And it's really a benefit when we're going to main highway, cruising at high speeds. And for a 39-year-old bike, it's still pretty solid. And it's still just a blast to ride. And I'm hoping I'm going to get 100,000 out of that engine. These engines with the roller crank have incredible torque.
bike seems to handle any condition you put it to. The only thing it doesn't like to do is go slow. Anybody that has one knows that's an amazing engine. That's why I felt so strongly about having put the time into it. I really feel like it was an excellent investment of my time. And I came away from the day with a lot of nice photos. And that engine always sounds like it's hardly working. What do you think, baby? I love the orange on the wheels. Nice, nice color match by uh, the lovely Mrs. Ertnowski, huh? Absolutely, I did a good job. <laughs> you did. <laughs> All right, I'm ready for coffee, baby. Hit that button. Did you make any coffee? Yeah, you just got to hit the button. It's ready to brew. So it looks like our project is finally done, even test driven. And the only thing, this is a rainy day job for putting that all back together, cleaning up some of the parts. And that's that bike has been worth every penny. So it went perfectly today as planned. Project is over, test ridden. All there is now to do is spend the whole summer riding. We gotta plan some nice long rides for this guy. My most comfortable bike. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna have coffee, we're gonna relax. Karen and I are gonna take a walk. We're probably gonna work on our garden a little bit, but all of this is possible because of the healthcare workers. Thank you guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow I go for my second shot with Karen and hopefully uh, I'll be safe and whatever. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm hoping for the best. Anyway, hope you did enjoy the video and hope you. I hope if you have a GS, you, you really enjoy it as much as I did. I have really enjoyed this bike. Had it since it was new. I got to add the two speedometers up. It comes to a little over 72,000, and every one of them has been fun. So I hope you did enjoy the video, and thanks for watching. Oh, actually, oh, look how tall. Oh. All right, I can do it. You ready? Go to the other side and hit the green button. What are you doing with the, with the, the computer? Hit the green button. Oh, God, I'm scared. What are you doing? Please, I want you to... You want it is on video. Where? So before the day was actually over, Miles came and visited us. We we made some demolition derby things on the treadmill. We took some more pictures by the house. I enjoy having these pictures. I have one as my screensaver now. It's just that little detail of painting the wheels. I think it changed the whole bike. I'm not sure you agree. I'm not sure you think I made a good investment in time in energy but as i look back now i'm not sure what i could have done with that 125 hours hey these evil twin projects 
Since I've had this bike since it's new, I've made carbon fiber mufflers, different parts, different seats, different bodywork, whole different set of bodywork. And from that parts bike, and the, the most thing is, every one of the things I've done to it has been a lot of fun. It's, it's given me the feeling that I've had 10 different motorcycles, and now I have even another one. Having this choice of wheels, and the nice thing as with any Evil Twin project, you just put the gold wheels back on, and it's just like nothing ever happened. Or well, we can turn it back into the West Cooley bike with black wheels. It never ends. That's what I love about Evil Twins. Anyway, we had a great day. It was an exceptional day. And it was nice to know that Karen really liked it. Karen's always my um, my, my go-to person when I want to know if something looks okay or not. And she hasn't let me down yet. It's, it's our saying, old men, old bikes, young hearts. And it's true. And I really do enjoy making the videos. I enjoy sharing the rides and all these little projects. Hope you enjoy watching them. And of course, the biggest thing of all, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks. I appreciate it.